Hi, I'm Tim, welcome to The Restoration Couple. And uh, today we have got a restoration on our hands. I've come up to Joe's parents and they've got this patio here. I think we can give it a bit of a new lease of life. So stick around, and we'll see how we get on. So over the past, I guess, decade or 15 years, there's been a big surge in the amount of people putting natural stone patios in. And the most common one of those is, is Indian sandstone. And you can get these relatively cheap. They come in a patio pack and they come in a, with a template and everything. So a lot of the times it's a DIY project, which is great. Uh, also, they're obviously installed professionally, but they're quite often installed incorrectly and I think that's what we've got wrong going on here. That's not to say it was a really bad install to start with, but uh, one of the telltale signs is the pointing is just, um, it's shot to bits now, and whether it's been repointed really within the last 10 years, I don't know, but it's certainly in need of it now. So I'm not sure how well you can make out these uh, joints now, but they're pretty non-existent, and any of the pointing that's come out has crumbled, as probably as a result especially the last couple of winters where we've had some real cold spells freezing and thawing and it's kind of broken it up. Some of the sand and aggregate that's in here from the old pointing is far too big and is evident that they've used sharp sand rather than building sand for the pointing. Some people try and lay their slabs down on a full mortar bed and then use the same mix to point at the same time, trying to be super efficient, but actually it's a completely different mix you need and this uh, that's you know it's broken up and uh, and you can see all these big bits of sand and gravel which are obviously part of a normal sharp sand mix which you would use to lay them on but not to fill these gaps finally set up pressure washing is a little bit hit and miss with the patio because you don't want to make anything worse by blasting out any pointing uh, that might be there but because we are redoing the whole lot it doesn't really matter uh, we can clear it all out so that's what I'm going to do and then we can start with the blank canvas. This is probably only a quarter of the space because the same stone carries on around the house. So this will stand out a little bit but it's kind of phase one really. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise job to be honest, guerrilla gardening here um, because they're away on holiday, uh, Joe's parents, so I kind of thought as I was up here doing a photo shoot uh, for a client nearby I'd take off uh, the afternoon and come over and try and get this done. So what I am going to do is give it a good clean. Now a lot of people will use a patio cleaner or something like that. A lot of those are acidic and that's no good for a lot of natural stones, especially a limestone, uh, you're going to cause some issues there. So um, rather than risk that, just a really good scrub clean. You can use a soapy water or a bleach or something like that. Being alkaline, that's probably better. Um, and we're just going to try and give it a bit of a clean. There's some nice colours in these stones usually. Clean that back up and then when we come to point, it doesn't matter that it's wet and I'll kind of touch on that later on. That's all the stone done uh, to a certain extent. I don't really want to sit there for hour on end getting it completely clean um, and taking away any of the character. There's some really nice coloration in here, but I don't think uh, it's necessary to take absolutely everything off. Um, so I've given it a good even clean and I have tried to avoid the pointing areas because uh, when I'm hitting them, it's just chucking up loads of the sand and grit that's in there and just making it way too deep. And because we're using the resin product, I've only got so much of it, I've got like a tub and a half, 
So if I just go really deep in areas, I'm just gonna lose loads of it under the slab. It might be that these slabs have been laid on blobs rather than a full mortar bed, which is not the way either. So I'm gonna go around now just by hand, rake out any bits and bobs of chunky bits that are left in there and just make sure that we've got a really clean, even groove everywhere and then we can get on and point. So we're down to about 10, 15 mil deep, which is fine for the uh, fast point products I'm using. The problem is I've uncovered another issue, which is that these slabs have not been laid properly at all. All of these slabs are just laid on a kind of sharp sand blinded um, base. There's no, doesn't appear to be any cement in there at all. So rather than laying them on a full mortar bed where the paving would be fixed down, uh, where it's just relying on them being bedded in. So it's actually relying on pointing more than, uh, than a conventional patio. Uh, but I'm, I've got to finish what I started, so I'm gonna point it as it is, if in the future there's gonna be a huge uh, project to lift all the slabs and relay them properly, then that'll be for another day. But for now, they're stable enough, and hopefully when we get this resin in there, it'll kind of hold everything together and stabilize. Everything's bedded down, nothing's shifting as such, um, but it's just unfortunate that they're not as solid as they should be. I'll be putting a video out next week which will kind of give you some top tips on how it should be done. Now something tells me I'm not gonna to manage to do the whole patio with just these two because these joints are so wide and so deep. Actually, this one is only half full, I think. Um, basically, if you've got any product left, you can submerge it underwater. Seems okay. What I'm gonna use is the half tub to do the filling of any of the deep bits first, and then we'll move to this. So the idea with this, I know I've done a video on this when we laid our patio, but you wanna get the patio as wet as possible. You can't get it too wet. Um, and that will just prevent any staining or anything like that and help distribute the uh, resin everywhere you want it. It's a sand, I keep saying resin, but it is kind of a sand um, compound. So I've done a rough brushing of it, kind of brushing across the joints to let it sink in. Brush it so it's just kind of flush with the top and then I'm gonna go around with my rubber hose. Otherwise you can use a striking tool, like a pointing tool, which I couldn't find this morning. So I've uh, lopped off a piece of my mother-in-law's hose and we'll use that. Then I've tamped it down, made sure that everything's flush and brushed away any excess. Keeping the whole lot just saturated and wet for the whole time. Uh, that stops any staining like you might get if you were using a cement uh, pointing. And then uh, now I've swept everything off again and I'm kind of just waiting for it to just dry up a little bit so that I can sweep off any of the dry uh, grains of sand that are left on top of the pavers. We could possibly have gone one step further and tried to get some of this black uh, sort of lichen or whatever it is off. But to be quite honest, that was seriously stubborn and it only really appears on some of them. 
uh, besides another year and this will be back to a slightly more natural grey but it really has brought out all the figure uh, that was in these natural stones. So it didn't go quite as far as I'd hoped. We've managed about three quarters of the patio so if you were trying to work it out for yourself two of those tubs would have done this space and I would guess this space is around five by five. Um, but of course if you've got shorter uh, or shallower joins and they're slightly narrower then you get away with it a lot more and you could make a bucket go probably one bucket would do the whole lot if they were nice neat joins we could go one step further i guess we could clean up the walling and replace that gravel drainage strip around the outside with some fresh clean brighter gravel uh, to kind of tie in with the now quite bright and colorful patio probably looking at around 40 to 50 pounds worth of materials to do this but if you value your time or it's wet weather um, or perhaps you just don't have the skill set to to do it pointing uh, with sand and cement and even if you do that you've got to be careful of the staining and things like that then this is a really good way to go but this isn't a sponsored video at all uh, I just had this leftover from our patio project a few years ago um, that said I it's tried and tested at our house at least so I'm happy enough to kind of stick our stamp of approval on that one. Uh, and we used the buff color, but to be quite honest, after one season it kind of grays anyway, so I wouldn't worry too much about the color matching. So yes, that was probably just watching me pressure wash and brush sand into a patio. Not the most exciting video, but if you get it right to start with, you probably won't have to do this such a short amount of time after it was laid. So I will be putting the new video, which will come out in a week or so, of top tips for laying a patio and things to avoid. Um, I will put that at the end of this one. I will also stick a link to our patio and path playlist down below and that kind of goes into more detail on the projects we did at our place. But check out the rest of the channel, there's loads of videos there. Make sure you subscribe and you'll get updates of all the DIY goodness going on. But that's it, thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time.